Hey guys, it's Amanda. I hope you're having a great day so far. In today's video, I will be showing you how I made this fun 8-bit heart card. This has a clean and simple design that is pretty easy to put together. It does take some extra time, but I think it's so worth it. Okay, so I'm starting out by slicing quarter inch strips from red, black, and white cardstock. Since I'll be cutting them into squares, I'm very mindful of my measurements. If you don't have a paper trimmer, you can always use a ruler and a craft knife. Once I have a bunch of those trimmed down to strips, I need to make them into quarter inch squares. I will say that mine didn't turn out perfectly, but as long as they're close enough, no one will ever notice. After those are all done, I take a piece of inexpensive grid paper and mark the squares I need to cover. I start with the widest part of the heart, which is 13 squares across and 4 rows tall. For the bottom part of the heart, I place two squares less for each row, removing one from each side. So it goes from 13 to 11 to 9 and so on until we get to one at the bottom. For the top part, I do the same thing for the first row, but I leave one out in the center, so instead of 11 in that row, it's only 10. And then for the very top row, I add three squares on each side. I hope that was easy enough to understand. If it's confusing, I apologize. Once I have the squares marked, I cover the section up with some double-sided tape. You could use a tape runner or liquid adhesive, but this was the quickest and strongest method that I found. When I peel off the release paper, I can perfectly see the squares and start placing them where I need to. I want my border to be black, so for every outer square, I will be adhering a black piece. I like to start from the top, working my way to the bottom, and then left to right. I found that doing it this way really helps keep everything aligned. To pick up the squares, I'm using a quick stick tool from We Are Memory Keepers. It's perfect for projects like these, but if you don't have one, a pair of pinch tweezers will do the trick. So here's where I need to add the white squares. I did a little L shape, but you could do four squares, one square, a diagonal line, or you could skip it if you really wanted to. As you can see, I sped this part up a lot to keep the video on the shorter side. My head makes a few appearances throughout and I apologize. I had to keep periodically checking my work to make sure that everything was staying aligned. This step may be tedious for some, but I like to just settle in and listen to audiobooks while I do this sort of thing. Of course, you could just color the grid paper in with markers or pencils, but I think this method is so cool and it makes the card a lot more special. Once it's a completed heart, I cut around it and then color the back with a red Sharpie. This paper is so thin that the Sharpie bled through with no problem. I did this because like I said, my squares weren't perfect, so there were some tiny white spaces that I wanted to hide. After I color that in, I cover the entire thing with my tape runner and adhere it to some red cardstock to give it a little bit more stability since the grid paper is so thin. You may be asking yourself, why did she color the back red if she's just going to back it with red cardstock? And I do this because the Sharpie needed to soak into the paper to change the color of it. Now I'm taking my craft knife and cutting out around the heart. You could try fine detail scissors, but this was the easiest way I found. Once it's all cut out, I take a black marker and go around the edges to kind of clean it up a bit and give it a nice finished look. Here I am taking a scrap piece of cardstock and folding it over the heart so I can run it through my die cut machine with no dies to make sure the squares are adhered really well. Next, I cut out some black fun foam and adhere it to the back of my heart with double-sided tape to give it some dimension. I set that aside and move on to the sentiment. I took one of the leftover red strips of cardstock and placed it in my misty so I could get a nice, solid, and straight impression. If you don't have a stamping tool, you can definitely just use an acrylic block for this. The sentiment I'm using is a set from Simon Says Stamp and CZE Designs called Simple Sentiments 1. This is a really fun set with unique sentiments you don't normally find. For the front of the card, I chose Love Your Guts, and on the inside, I stamped Not in a Creeper Way. Minecraft lovers will appreciate this. Once it's all stamped, I go ahead and layer three strips of red cardstock to add some subtle dimension. I use my tape runner, but double-sided tape would also work. 
I add some black strips as well, but I keep them as a single layer. Okay, using double-sided tape, I adhere the heart to an A2 size folding note card. And then I stick the strips down using some very thin double-sided tape. And of course, the final step is to trim the excess. I love the classic red heart, but because I am a nut for gray, I decided to make a grayscale one as well. This one has a few different shades of gray and some random squares that I layered to give dimension here and there. This is a perfect card for anyone that loves video games or nerd culture. It'd be great for any gender and any age. You can always swap out this sentiment for a more traditional one and it will be just as fun. Okay, that is it for today. If you have any questions or requests, please leave a comment down below. All of the products I use in this video are listed in the description box. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to stick around for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.